Praise the Lord. In these last days, there are so many cults and religions, and we were, whether we realize it or not, we were raised up in a Catholic world, being taught Catholic traditions and Catholic doctrines. Uh, whether we call ourselves a Catholic or a Protestant or an atheist or an unbeliever or a pagan or a Buddhist or whatever, um, we live by the Roman calendar. We call the days of the week by Roman names. We call the months of the year by Roman names. And um, we were raised up under the auspices and, and, and pres precepts of the Roman religion. And so a lot of times people think it's strange when they come to me and say, hey man, what are you doing for Christmas? And I tell them, well, I'm not Catholic. Actually, I'm a Christian, and so I don't observe the Christmas festival. And they get offended, and they're like, what? What are you talking about? Catholic? You don't have to be Catholic. Christmas is about Jesus Christ. And I, I, if I have the opportunity, I can sit there and explain to them from the scripture that Christmas has nothing to do with Jesus Christ at all. It's the Christ Mass. It's a pagan, uh, unbloody sacrifice. It's a festival in, of an ungodly organization. And it has nothing to do with Jesus Christ or the birth of Jesus Christ at all. And in that same way, people celebrate this, this pagan festival called Halloween. And when they do it, and they talk to me about it, and I tell them that I'm not Catholic, they get that same look in their eyes. Like, you know that look that your dog gets when you switch a ball from hand to hand real fast? And he's like, um, Catholic? What do you mean Catholic? Halloween has nothing to do with Catholic. Well, yes, Halloween is, a, Halloween is a Catholic festival. It's actually a contraction. Uh, of two English words, it's it's all Hallows even, uh, three English words actually, all Hallows even, but it's called Halloween with a, um, an apostrophe between the first E and the second E, um, because in Old English the the word even was spelled that way. It was E apostrophe E N instead of E V E N, which really doesn't save a lot of time actually. I don't know why they did that, but that's what it is. And All Hallows Even is actually the night before All Saints Day, which is a Catholic festival where they celebrate and worship their their dead people whom they have, whom their popes have venerated as saints. These are the the saints that the supposed saints that they pray to, who supposedly intercede to God for them um, in their vain pagan religion, which is actually the Roman religion. It's not Christianity at all. Um, the Roman Catholic Church is called that because it's the Roman religion and it's Catholic, which means is, is an adjective that means universal for everybody. And so it's, it's the Roman religion imposed upon everybody. Okay? It has nothing to do with God or Jesus Christ or the Bible or the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ at all. It's, it's completely pagan. <coughs> Everything that the Catholic Church practices and teaches is totally against the Word of God. And All Saints Day is another one of their festivals. All Saints Day, um, Lent, Easter, Christmas, Halloween, um, Ash Wednesday, um, you name it. They have probably dozens of them throughout the year. And these are all pagan festivals, pagan rituals that have nothing to do with the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and they're Catholic. And so Halloween, whether you realize it or not, when you're partaking in the festival of All Hallows Even, you are celebrating and worshiping the dead. And since the dead cannot receive your worship, guess who is? Remember the church lady? I wonder who it could possibly be. Could it be oh, Satan? <laughs> oh my. It's, uh, it's amazing how those things stick in your brain from years ago. But yes, when you, when you offer worship to things that are nothing, then you're offering worship actually to Satan because he's receiving that worship and he loves to receive worship. He's the one who took Jesus to the top of the temple and showed him all the all the uh, the kingdoms, or excuse me, up into a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and said, all these are mine and I give them to whomsoever I will and I'll give them to you. All you have to do is fall down and worship me. Okay? And the Son of God said, get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. So if you're a pagan, you're not really worried about these things and you're still going to go ahead and, and worship the Halloween uh, ritual and, and partake of the Halloween festival anyway. But if you're someone who professes to be a Christian or you're coming to the faith and you're coming to Jesus Christ because he's drawing you, Halloween is something that you want to avoid. And then there are those in the churches out there in the denominations, which are organizations for the purpose of business, their commercial enterprises, They've been denominated, which means they have chosen a lesser name in order to create a business so they don't offend people and so that they can attract as many people as possible so that they can get a lot of money to pay for the big buildings and to pay the salaries of the employees that work there. Uh, 
but that's not has nothing to do with the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. But the churches, you'll see them all over the place. Instead of calling it Halloween, they'll call it the Fall Festival or the Harvest Festival. And when you go to them and you rebuke them and you tell them, look, all you're doing is having a substitute name for the same festival, and they'll tell you, well, we have the kids here and we have to do it for the kids because we have to give them some sort of a reasonable substitute. Really? Why don't you just try teaching your children the truth instead? Children love the truth. Children will believe the truth. It's we adults who hate the truth. I shouldn't include me in that but because I love the truth and maybe you love the truth too, but it's it's majority is, is adults that hate the truth and love to be lied to. But children love to be told the truth. Why are you going to tell your children these lies? And you, you don't have to give them an alternative, a, a substitute for that. That's ridiculous. Okay? If you want to take your child to the store and buy them a bag of candy, go buy them a bag of candy. And it'll save them the, the, the embarrassment and the, and the destruction from the Lord of going and partaking of, of pagan rituals. Tell your child, no matter how old he is, say your child's name is Billy. Okay, Billy, look, here's how it is. We're Christians. We serve God in this house. And we don't partake of the festival called Halloween because God hates it. Okay? So you don't have to be jealous of all these other kids that are going out there and dressing up like fools and dressing up like devils. To worship the devil so that they can die and go be with the devil you can be in our house and serve the Lord Jesus Christ and guess what if you want some candy I'll take you to the store and I'll buy you a candy bar okay I'll buy you a whole bag of candy bars and we'll keep them in the cupboard and you can have one if you're good you know whenever you whenever you like whenever you ask me okay that's how you treat the situation and I don't have children but even I can tell you that okay even I can tell you that it's not a good thing to lie to your children and give them an, an alternative substitute so that they can be like the world. We're not supposed to be conformed to this world. We're supposed to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And if you're a parent and you have children, if you're a Christian and a parent and you have children, then it's not your responsibility to, to let your children decide for themselves. It's your responsibility to teach them diligently the ways of the Lord. Okay? If you have a child, the child is not an adult. The child is not in a position to make decisions for himself. That's why he lives in your house. So you don't tell the child, okay, well, some people believe in Jesus Christ and some people believe in Buddha, and little Billy, I just want you to decide for yourself. That's murder. How would you do that to a little child? You teach that child diligently the ways of the Lord. Okay, because the ways of the Lord are truth. And you say, Billy, this is what the scripture says. We're going to sit down and we're going to read the scripture. This is what God says, and this is how we behave ourselves. And what God says we're not to do, that's what we don't do. Okay, and if Billy says, why? Then you show Billy from the scripture. And if Billy doesn't like it, then he can go to his room. Okay, it's just like any other rule in your house. My house, my rules. Okay, you don't like my rules, move out. That's how it is. Praise the Lord. And that's how we are to raise our children, those of us who have children. So don't come to me. When I come to you and tell you that you say that you're a Christian, how come you celebrate the Halloween festival? Don't come to me and tell me, well, I have to give my child a reasonable substitute, or I do it for the kids because I don't want my kid to feel bad. Don't tell me that. That's not an excuse. Okay? And if I come to your church and you're having a, a harvest festival, and I tell you this is the same thing as the Halloween festival just called by a different name, why are you doing this? Don't, don't give me that excuse of telling me, well, we have to have a reasonable substitute to please the people. You know, that's what Saul did, and that was his downfall. He did what he did. He spared the king of Agag alive. He spared the best of the flocks and the herds because that was what the people wanted. And he disobeyed the Lord to please the people. And what happened to Saul? He died in battle and wound up in hell. And he's still there. He's still there. Okay. And a lot of the reason that he did that was because after his downfall, he sought after a medium who had a familiar spirit because he couldn't even hear from the Lord anymore. And as you depart from the Lord, and you can't hear from the Lord anymore, and you reach out to other spirits, seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, this is what happens to you when you turn from the Lord. And as you continually do that, you wind up dying and going to hell. And that's not what the Lord wants for you. That's not what I want for you. So come away from the pagan rituals of, of the Catholics, and, and come away from the Halloween festival. You know, don't say to me, well, we have to do this as, a, a, as an alternative because we have to please the people. That's what the Christ Mass is. The Christ Mass is, is a so-called Christian alternative to the Saturnalia Festival. Okay? It is the Saturnalia Festival with a different name attached to it. And those who partake of the abomination of the Christ Mass are eating and drinking at the table of devils. And you can't eat at the table of devils and at the table of the Lord. You can't drink the cup of devils and the cup of the Lord. 
You can't do those both. You have to decide one or the other. And if you drink at the cup of devils and you come to the cup, to the table of the Lord and try to drink his cup, guess what he's going to say? Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. So come away from the traditions of the heathen. If the traditions of the heathen, the customs of the heathen are vain. And stop celebrating the Halloween festival and the All Saints Day and all the dead people that the Roman Catholic Church venerates as saints. And come to the Lord Jesus Christ and be one of the saints that he has ordained. Because the true meaning of a saint is one who has been washed from his sins and filled with the sinless one, the gift of the Holy Ghost, so that he can walk in righteousness and in truth and inherit the kingdom of God that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us which walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. That's what a saint is. A saint isn't some dead person that the Pope gave some honor to so that we can pray to this imaginary dead person who can't hear us and have him intercede to God for us. There's one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. So when you celebrate the festival of Halloween, you're celebrating the dead. You're worshiping the dead. That's what you're doing. Whether you think you are or not, that's what you're doing. Okay, when you're driving down the street, you might imagine that you're riding a bicycle. That's fine. That's your right to do so. But you're not riding a bicycle. You're driving a car. And you're subject to the things that happen to people when they drive a car. And if you're celebrating the, the rituals of the heathen, you might imagine that you're doing something else, but you're celebrating the rituals of the heathen. And you're incensing the anger of a living God and bringing wrath upon you and your children. And the best thing that you can do if you love your children is obey the commandments of God. So come away from that foolishness and that wickedness. Of, of worshiping the dead and when people come and knock on your door on Halloween the night of Halloween the day before All Saints Day or the evening before All Saints Day instead of giving them candy and encouraging them in what they do tell them give them a gospel track tell them the Lord Jesus Christ died and rose again he's alive why are you worshiping the dead the dead can't save you worship the living Jesus Christ he is the, the resurrection and the life he is the way the truth and the life give those kids something that they can that they can bite into Give those kids a little bit of the bread of life instead of the, the candy of the devil and send them away on their way to hell. Why would you do that? That's murder. Praise the Lord. So let the Lord use you this month as people come to your door and, and, and worship the dead. Tell them not to worship the dead anymore. Tell them that the dead can't save them. Tell them that there's one who is alive forever. He's risen incorruptible and able to save those to the uttermost that come unto him. Jesus Christ, the living God, blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you for letting me speak these things to you, in Jesus' name.